Hello everyone, this is William from Visual Components, and this is part two of the Point Cloud and Topology video series. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create point clouds using imported geometry that's been tessellated into triangle sets. So I'm going to show you how to create point clouds using position tables, vectors, and point indexes, and I'll also cover several methods that are specific to 3D Automate. Let's get started by creating a basic component that we can work with in this video. Remember, we need to work with imported geometry that's been tessellated into triangle sets. So let's start by creating a dummy component. So I'll go to the Create tab, and I'll create a new component with one block feature. So I'll click OK. And notice the component is created, and here is the block feature. However, notice that I do not have access to the geometry sets that are in this block feature. To show you further, I can go to View, Shading, and turn on the display of wireframe. So notice there are many triangles contained within this block feature, however I can't select them. So what I can do is I can create a new geometry feature in the component. I can parent the block feature to the geometry feature. And I can now select a geometry feature and collapse it. So this will collapse all of its child features into one feature. So I click Collapse. And I've now merged those two features and I'm left with a geometry container of many triangles that are contained in one triangle set. So now I can go to the Behavior tab and create a Python script. And I'll show you. I'll get a handle for the geometry container itself. So I'll say comp equals get component. And I'll get the geometry feature in the component. So comp dot find feature. Reference its name of geometry. And for the geometry container, remember it's the geometry features geometry property. Okay. So now I can go ahead and print out how many geometry sets are in the container. So print gc dot geometry set count. So compile the code. Notice I now have one geometry set, and it's of VC triangle set type because notice here are all the triangles that are all contained within one geometry set. So now I can go ahead and create a point cloud. So remember I need to create a VC point set type geometry set in this container. So I'll say PS for point set equals geometry container or GC dot create geometry set VC underscore point set. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and print the geometry containers geometry set count after that. And I'll also print the geometry sets themselves. So print GC geometry sets. So if I compile the code, notice I have two geometry sets now. One is a VC triangle set object, and one is a VC point set object. So I now have access to the properties and methods in VC triangle set, as well as the properties and methods in VC point set. And I can now use these triangles to create points in the 3D world. I'm now going to show you how to create points in the 3D world by using a position table. This table provides data on each position in each triangle for the geometry set you're working with. So here in the 3D world, I can get the position data for this point here and this point here where the triangles are made. So let's go to the Python script and get handles for everything. You don't need all this stuff right here. So I can now loop through the geometry sets in the container. So for GS, geometry sets in the container dot geometry sets. If GS, if the geometry set type is equal to VC underscore point set colon point set PS equals geometry set. Else if GS dot type is equal to VC underscore underscore triangle set colon. I'll go and abbreviate triangle set as TS equals GS. So to make sure I have handles for everything, I'll go and print PS as well as the TS variable. So let's compile the code. And notice I do have the handles for the point set object and the triangle set object. Now to get a handle for the position table, that's actually contained in VC triangle set. So I'll say positions equals TS dot position table. And if you want to know what this looks like, you can go and print positions. This prints a list of all the data. 
So notice it's very long, so it has the x, y, z, then it repeats itself to the next point of x, y, z. So to make things easier, I'm going to go and create new lists for the x, y, and z coordinates for each point. So I'll say x equals positions, square brackets, and I'm going to start with the first index value of 0, and I'm going to use two colons to get every other element in the list. So I want every other third item. So this list will start here at 0, 0. It'll then go 1, 2, 3, and grab this value here for the x position. So now to get this for the y, I can say y equals positions, square brackets, the next element of 1, and then the third element after that. So it'll go the y value, 1, 2, 3. Do the same for the z. So z equals positions, square brackets, and that third item of index value of 2. And I want to get every other third item. So I can now loop through all this data to create points in the 3D world. So in the Python script, I'll go ahead and say ps.clearPoints, because I want to recreate and create the points again. And then I'll go ahead and change the point size to equal 5.0. And I don't need any scale, I'll just use the default of 1.0. And now I'll go and create the loop. So for i in range, and with triangle sets, you actually have a property called point count, so you actually can know how many points are actually in the triangle set. So range is going to be TS point count. So for every point, I'm going to add a point. So for my point set, ps.addPoint. And I'll go and use the x list with the index value of i for y index value of i, and for the z, index value of i. All right, so what's happening is that I'm getting the total amount of points in the triangle set, and so for each point, I'm creating a new point in the point set object. So what I can do now is go ahead and update the point set, so ps.update. I'll go and get a handle for the application, so app equals get application. And I'll go and render everything out. So app.render. All right, let's see how this all works out. So I'll compile the code. So I'll go and zoom out a bit. I'll actually move it over. And you can see there are the points I just created. I'm now going to show you how to get a point in a triangle as well as return its vector, which you can then use to create a point cloud with. So it's a little bit different from a position table. So I'll go and clean up my code here. And what I'll do is I'll go and make the positions variable a new empty list. I'll now loop through the points in the triangle set I'm working with. So for i in range triangle set point count, I'll say p is equal to ts triangle set. And I'm going to use the get point method here that you have available. So I'll get the point, and I'll use that index value based on the point count. So it'll go from 0 to however many points are there. And then I'll go ahead and append that point to my positions list. So positions.append p. All right, I can now go ahead and use those points. So for i, actually I need to change this up. So what happens with the getPoint method is it returns a vector value for each point, or the point you reference here in the method. So using those vectors, I can say for v in my positions list, so it's going to get each vector in that list. I'll say ps.addPoint, and I'll use the x value of the vector, the y value, and the z value. So just to explain it again, so you understand, I created an empty list. I then looped through the points that are in the triangle that I'm working with. I got the vector object for each point, and I added it to my list. I then created a loop through the list and added a point for each vector. So I'll compile the code. Notice everything stays the same. It's just that I used a different approach here, used vectors instead of just straight positional data. And just to make sure everything works out, I'll go and change the point color. So I'll go and make it green. So full value of green, 
with red and blue at zero. So compile the code. There are the points. I'm now going to show you a way to select certain points in a triangle set and use them in your point cloud. To do that, I'm going to use a couple methods in VC triangle set. So I'll go and talk about a little bit about those now. So the first method I'm going to use is called get point indexes within. Now this method takes two arguments. The first argument is a vector that defines the center for an area. And the next parameter is the radius of that area. So you're creating a cube in the 3D world or a volume space. And any point that is within that area, you're going to get its index value in the triangle set. So the next method you're going to use is get point positions. Now this method takes a list of point indexes and returns the position of each point you reference. And it's going to return a list of vectors. So I'll show you how to use these methods. I'll go and clean up the code. And I'll create a variable called pindex equals. And remember the methods are used in VC triangle sets. So ts dot get point indexes within. And I'm going to keep things simple at first, so I'm just going to use the bounding box of the current component I have, the current geometry set, as my center position. So I'll say ts.boundCenter. I'll then define the radius as 50, so it's actually going to create 100 by 100 cube. All right, so if I want, I can go ahead and print p index to show you what is returned. You notice it's a list of point indexes. So now if I want to get the position for each point that's referenced in my list, I can say positions equals triangle set dot get, oops, sorry, get point positions. And remember this takes a list of point indexes, so I'll say p index. I can go ahead and print positions now to show you what's returned. And notice I've now returned the vector for each point in that index. All right. So let's now go ahead and use the positions list I have to create a point cloud. So notice I already have it set up here. So I'm using the vector in the positions and I'm getting its x, y, and z value. So I created green points. I'll go ahead and use the default of white. So I'll go ahead and compile the code. Notice it now created the points based on the vectors I just passed. All right, so now if I want to change things up and filter which points further, I actually can use a third argument in the get point indexes within method. And this allows you to define a surface normal that the points have to face. So I'll go and make this a little bit bigger for you. And I'm going to import VC vector to create a new vector. So import VC vector. And I'll go ahead and create my new normal. So I'll say my, uh, I'll make the variable called filter equals VC vector dot new. Remember, you're defining a normal, so it's basically the direction of x, y, and z. And I'll say it's going to be 0 for x direction, 0 for y. And I'll use a filter of 1, so going in the positive z direction. So for the p index, I'll go ahead and insert that filter here. And let's go and compile the code and see what's returned. So notice over here in the 3D world, I have the points here that are created. So they're going in the up direction here. So if I wanted to mix things up, if you want to get these points that are facing down here, I can go ahead and change the filter to be negative 1. Notice now the points are here. Same thing applies for the other directions. So if I make that 0 and make the x direction positive. To talk a little bit further about the selection area that I'm creating in the 3D world, I'll go ahead and change the shading setting. So I'll go to View shading and change it to shaded. I'll now go to tools and select measure. So notice I'm using the bound center of the component or the geometry set and a radius of 50. So I can now select the bound center here and I'll go ahead and select a uh, face center now. So I'll select the face center here. And you can notice that the distance is 50. So that's how this selection area works. You define a center location and then the radius to one of its faces. All right, this concludes the video. Stay tuned for part three of the video series where I show you how to use topology to create points on both flat and curved surfaces. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net 
and I hope you have a wonderful day.